Hello everybody, this is Spiralin. Welcome back to Disco Elysium, where we are up here. So now we can go and explore more. Collecting rainwater. I should get a back for, you know, uh, being able to collect bottles, because I see a lot of bottles around here. I don't know which way it continues, which way to go first. These three packs worth of cigarette butts. Numerous empty bells of Commodore Red and potent Pilsner. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. You need to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. Okay, Kim, I'm gonna take a quick look around inside. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man is young, dark skinned and dressed in a Royal Carabiner uniform. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that? Jen and us glancing at the photo. I'm a cop. It's instinctual to like evidence. Fine, but let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. Okay, so let's leave. Can't get down here, right? Where can I go? Oh. All around you, great machines and crescents. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. What's this? A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Marsh and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Elume on Tendre. Off. It says March, not Elume. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Very sneaky. Very, very sneaky. Extremely, extremely sneaky. Bam, it is shaking. Is it okay? Nothing here. And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Its purpose? What do you mean? Moving this container, of course. For this purpose it was built. For this purpose, it has acted, and now it will rest. I can't see how that was worth the records, except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's uh, something I can interact with, so I will interact with it. More money. Not really getting to the amount I need. So if I did install Industrial lettering on the platform. Kevelsund. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. You do? Because I don't. Wait, why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? I don't know, Kim. It just feels special. It's a cargo container, detective. Just like all the others. He doesn't even look at it. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to talk to the Union, right? Open the door. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the Lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Well, a knock on it. No reply. The knock produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. 
Well, there's nothing more to do here for now. Too bad. Where are we going? Shipyard has it oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. That's not good for the people who own the machines. Speaker tower is silent. There's no work to organize in the yard below. Hey, what's this? Potentially stuff for me? The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like blood. Ugh. What's this? Fallen Ultra series cloth. Uh, these will give me interfacing and these give me half-life and these give me electrochemistry. Ew, definitely fancy. What are my stats? Half life, half life. Where is it? Half, half light. There. Let the body take control. Threatened people. Ooh, I don't know whether I need to wear those. Interfacing or electrochemistry. The electrochemistry was about the trucks, and then interfacing. Yeah, let's go with that because I'm already good at it. It should be even better. Oh, there's money here. So much money lying around. Industrialized tarma smells like burned coffee. There's even more money. Oh, what's that? It's a dude. Benesex under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. Yes? Nothing? Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubi Sunt on Muindi. Container, container, used to be wild pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Tiny man is so engaged in his work, he doesn't notice you. Well, I won't interrupt the long man, it's joyous activity then. I know, I'm usually talking to everybody, but come on. Give him some peace and quiet. So, I guess, let's go in here. That is what we do here, right? Equip a plastic bag. Collect bolt and silent fruit. Yes, but where do I get the plastic bag? Probably not in here. Coffee is in the giant thermos is still lukewarm. Interesting. Stair made of pallets leading up. Oof. Hey there. Taxidermy fish that tells time. Sure. I just talk to you actually. Yes. Uh, tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Uh, would you say this is a mysterious case? No, it's not a particularly mysterious case. Oh, that's all I needed to know. The lieutenant adjusts his collar. It doesn't look like he wants the case to be more mysterious. <laughs> if we're from different precincts, why are we on the same case? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. Uh, what do you mean? You don't know. I assumed you were in on it. Tell me about it. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Okay, so let it go. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Actually, I have all I need for now. Good. Can, can I get by uh, without telling him that I don't remember anything? I uh, want to be talking about you. Me? Yeah, yeah, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Um, we'll work better together if we have more report. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Um, tell me a secret about yourself. Wait, no, we should start with your wearing classes. That's correct. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this, but you can't quite muster enough testosterone. 
Just observing. I guess you don't need glasses then. Yes, just just observing. So tell me a secret about yourself. No. Oh, okay. The lieutenant nods. I'm not gonna say you don't look like other people around here. Do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking, do you have your conversations with like your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. So you're saying your brain never just chimes in with the rise of warnings or anything? I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. Okay, that's all for now. Good. Let's change the subject. Uh, nothing. Nothing, nothing. I don't want to admit that I'm not aware of what's going on around me. So, hey there. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you with a mixture of expectation and impatience. Well, bottom. Could I just like leave that comment? Is this just some kind of game? Have a good day, Mr. Dubois. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around. He waves and returns to his typing. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. I hope time is on your side this time. Please, take a seat. Actually, I'm a bit of a hoe right now. Have a good day, Mr. Dubois. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around. Okay, that's the same. So can't really do that. Mr. Dubois, I hope time is on your side this time. Please, take a seat. Uh, why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. Just just so you know, he gestures to a minuscule folding chair opposite of his huge desk. Actually, I was just leaving. Have a good day, Mr. Okay, no. Yeah, so I was hoping, to, uh, like, there would be some kind of strategy where I could be there Mr. and... Mr. And... I hope time is on your side this time. Please, take a seat. Like, have some kind of... I don't know, fight just by constantly being like that actually actually i won't waste my time on you but there's nothing changing if you do that probably i'd rather stand please mr dubois let us converse in a civilized manner as equals take a seat i insist i don't sit it's kind of my thing very well mr dubois i respect a man with strong convictions as in knots his multiple chins move like ocean waves i too have convictions one of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. He turns back to his typewriter. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. <sighs> I don't want to do this. I want to be strong. Can I, can I go back here? No, but there's nothing to do here. What is it that I would need to be good at? Oh, I'm at one. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna be able to ever get to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna sit. So take a seat then. Yes, yes. Mr. Dubois, excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man, and reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a sly wink. Try to wink back. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. 
It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. He pines at it again. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Wait, you know God? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. 25 is not enough, by the way. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. <sighs> Take the comically liked check, but don't say anything. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Or? Uh, no, it's cool. You've got integrity. Cool? I wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure, if that's what's cool nowadays. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Do you have a lost gun? His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Oh God, why didn't you think of this before? Cops have guns. Where's yours? This doesn't worry me at all. Who cares if I lost my gun and the love of my life? Oh, 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 oh. Despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. I shouldn't have done Whatever that. Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer, it's eaten them all up now. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? Uh. Wow. Seriously running out of shits to give. Let corpses hang on trees. I'm quitting. Fuck you. Fuck me? Please leave the rage you have for after we finish the investigation. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective Cop genre gives for up social the detective realism. Genre for social realism. Another police officer resigned from the RCM following a nervous breakdown. He now lives under a bridge. Drinking and occasionally throwing excrement at passers-by, shouting, I never loved that woman. When asked to comment, former colleagues objected to the theory that his psychological disintegration was precipitated by his wife leaving him. It's because the furrows lost that match, said Captain Patolomy Price, once the man's superior officer. It's because he couldn't get a big gun from acquisitions and, anyway, Police work really burns you out after a while. Satellite officer Jean Vitmer, the deranged former cop's partner, commented. Sergeant Mac Torson, another former colleague, did not propose any theories, merely saying, whatever happened to him wasn't about birds. He got fucked, that's all. Okay. So let me go back a bit. Okay, so instead of going in here, let me go back and then come here later because this man obviously has a lot of knowledge on me and his $25 oversized check won't save the world. Where do we need to go? Oh, this way. Okay. So there's not really a point on going there right now. Also, since we opened this way now, I think we can just come back very easily after should be able to go through the door now. Yes. See a container you can't open. Equip a pry bar. Well, or a run around with a pry bar in hand. We got, oh, a lot to do here. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Mm, okay, in center 10 cents. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Let your muscle memory 
dial a random number. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. Right now, your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. Hmm. Useful patterns? Undoubtedly, no. I might try this again later. Sure, why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. So this needs interfacing. Oops. Could I have had anything worth interfacing? No. The radio is emitting a strange buzzing sound. A giant ass print on the pillow and pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Oh, there's a book here. Book. La Fumée, volume 1, number 4. It's a comic book then. So I left the coffee machine on. Standard coffee office file cabinet. Drawers seem to be blocked. It's a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. Every worker and member of the board is written at the top of the flyers. And at the bottom, the union logo and demand democracy. Oh, can I open this? On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the union to just leave their paperwork laying around like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Uh, I have a really low chance here. Oh god, come on. Look how blurry all the lines on these papers are. How unwieldy your own willpower is to yourself. You're like an absurdist Samaran monk, focusing through not focusing. Hermeneutics was almost within your grasp, but now only vague letters float before your eyes. Less meaningful, but aesthetically more pleasing. Could I actually focus through not focusing? You are a police officer, not a spiritual healer. You can focus the normal way by turning your attention to something and not letting go. But if I let my eyes go completely out of focus, all shapes start melting into each other. Is that what you're doing with those folders over there? Uh, let's just get back to work, Lieutenant. My thought, exactly, officer. Shall we? Oh. I got a plus one there. Actually, I can't look at my inventory whether I'm wearing anything. Okay, try again. You're trying hard, but the data here is unbelievably dry. Something about containers. Okay. The drawer slides shut. So, am I wearing anything that gives a minus to it? No, I don't. So I can't change it right now. Don't know whether I remember stuff like that for later. Postcard. Stuff in the bathroom. Magnesium. And some classes need office shades, visual calculus, but less trauma. Well, how do I look? Yeah, much better. Okay, nothing more to do inside. Let's go through here then. Stores locked and cannot be opened from this side without a pass card. In case you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. Oh god, no! What have I done? Some is habitually chilling next to the radio. Yeah, I got that from the aspirin. And I can't get any information here by like... The file cabinet stands steady as ever. The drawer. No. Okay, okay, let me just get there, I guess. So, let's interrupt this man here because maybe we get some kind of leverage. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi. 
from the vanishing peninsula of Obisund on Moindi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Hey, Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? No, of course not. I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Um. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves at the container staring behind him. Logic. Okay, what's going on here? Look at the mountains of containers rising behind him. The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pine's livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. There appear to be cisterns underneath the Union container covers. This looks like a massive redecoration operation, Kim. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. Now, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really. Miss Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. <laughs> what is underneath these red covers? Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. Thanks, Lee. You've been very helpful. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Uh, what's in that container over there? Pointed to crane is suspended from the crane arm. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Told you. Well, yeah, cool. Do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? The lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. I think you're doing a great job around here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Lieutenant smiles at the little man. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You didn't think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. Where's everyone? The harbor is empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. Cleans in with a confidential smile. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! <laughs> We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. Kind of... But he seems eager to tell you more. So, okay. What kind of trouble did this Titus and friend get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. He smiles and leans closer. Him and his boy stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. Well, what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hearties. He looks to you for assistance. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Just 
To Rowdy Leo, what kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving, and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. I'm looking for the leader of the Dock Workers Union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs, then continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find this man. Oh, Mr. Ever is where he always is. In his office, of course. You find the two containers on your right. Okay, let's see where there's any more information to be gained. You're at Ubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Okay, I'm off. Bye bye now. Who turns to his work? I don't know whether I gained anything. But let's see whether this might not, you know, work out differently now. Okay. Whew, a bit stressed out. But I can take two hits. Just need to look at all the things again. Like a good detective. Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you with a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Are you in charge of the dock workers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite to his giant desk. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. The man relaxes into his chair and continues. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. <laughs> Lord, no, not to do then the chair. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. I don't say it, it's my kind of thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions, one of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Okay, okay. Sit down. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a wink, try to wink back. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. 
He points to a giant novelty chuck on his desk. It's absolutely comically used. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Okay. Take the comically large check, but don't say anything. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? No, or it's cool. Cool? Now, I'd like to set your mind at... His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Oh God, why didn't you think of this before? Cops have guns. Where's yours? Okay, let me try the other thing. Pat your pockets. It's gone. Your gun is gone. There's nothing in your pockets. Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. I'm Harry de Poix. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Well, wonderful. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Oh, wow. So I didn't say thank you, but I tipped your novelty check. The gun was surprised and it chose killing you. So I have a lot of minuses here. Uh, Kim, um, Kim. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Claire's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. So I need to try not to panic. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. So what? Man can cry too. You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. Oh, God. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so for one, I think I shouldn't take the check. Because I'll have an easier time later. Keep it, I'm good. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts then. He crosses his arms on his ample midsection and sinks further into the chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease. Yes, yes, his lost gun, slug like lost lips. Gun. Oh. The world is swollen. Oh god. Lost gun, lost gun. Why? Lost it's gone. Gun. Are you all right? It's not like you left it late. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. Okay, you so taking the check or not does make a difference. Barrels. Officer. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Oh, god. You're what if I say you can take the comically light check and shove okay, it up your ass? Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. Doesn't change anything, does no it? No handouts, then. Oh, Ronnie the Rookie, you ain't worried about no lost gun or unpaid bill or forgotten name. You're the bad cop. You're probably more corrupt than him. <laughs> Sink deep into the folding chair. Smile and cross your hands behind your back. The fat man does the same sinking deeper into his chair than one would think is physically possible. He seems to be enjoying your little display. Good. Now lean in with some corruption. Listen, Everett, pal. We both know what makes the wheels of the world turn. That we do, Harry. Let them say what they will about you and me. We're both born fighters. Nice bit with the chair, by the way. <laughs> A good way to keep your guests on edge. Why, thank you. It's always nice when a fellow professional appreciates your work. That's it. Now kick back and add a final flourish for dignity. I'm not saying I'm corrupt. I'm rational. You strike me as a reasonable man, Harry. I like that in a law man. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? What can Everard Clare do for you? I think we'd like to ask you a few questions. Don't you think so, detective? The lieutenant looks quite fed up with the situation. Somehow you managed to get yourself out of this one. Now quick, 
Keep the momentum up. Ask questions. Whatever you do, don't ask him about the gun first. You don't want him thinking you're scared. You can't make Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. So that's really my name. My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. My memory is fine. I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Lieutenant Inspector Everett over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Where did you get that folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha, you guys are so corrupt. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Okay, have another look at the folder. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. That's not an RCM folder. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. Got him there. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the census bro says my name is Harry Dupont. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. What's in a container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbour. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to Qualsant Crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work, but okay. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... A man my age? What are you implying? I'm at the peak of my abilities. Hmm. You did look like you were gonna collapse and die when I told you about your lost gam. Nah, I just had to reload like 20 times. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Okay, so I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin A's. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand... You need to interview me. Say nothing. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. 
But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. You've heard wrong, Everett. We're not. Oh, you're being too modest, my friend. But don't worry. This annoying thing I have is completely legal. I just need you to open a door. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the Archliar. Pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? What do you mean by weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and wraps his nose. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. He puts his glasses back on. But you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. I can't accept this thing. Refuse the task, but it says for now. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. Yes, we both understand what you meant. This may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. Let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and... Effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you, we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. Everett, I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great. Wouldn't want to get stuck in here. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Okay, so now I can leave. This doesn't really go as wished, but I guess better than before? I mean, at least I didn't die in the process and I can now actually go out. But I think I'll be ending the video here. This has been a rather long one because I failed that redo part. And I don't know how it goes. I don't know whether you actually have to cooperate with him I just don't like being blackmailed. I just, I just, you know. I want to use my powers. I don't want other people to use their powers. And blame me. Also, this cost me all my magnesium and whatnot. So, yeah, I'm not happy about that. Hey, man, let's get out of here. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Well, until then.